हेलो एंड वेलकम टू इजी लर्निंग विद डॉक्टर सलमान खान इन दिस वीडियो वी विल बी स्टडिंग द पैरासाइट इंटरमीबा हिस्टोलाइटिका दीज आर द सेक्शंस अंडर व्हिच वी विल बी स्टडिंग द पैरासाइट इंट्रोडक्शन एपिडेमियोलॉजी हैबिटेट मॉर्फोलॉजी लाइफ साइकिल मोड्स ऑफ इंफेक्शन पैथोजेनेसिस क्लिनिकल फीचर्स लैबोरेटरी डायग्नोसिस एंड प्रोफिलैक्सिस First introduction to the parasite the word amoeba is derived from the greek word amoebae meaning change amoebae are structurally simple protozoans which have no fixed shape they are classified under phylum sarcomastigophora subphylum sarcodina superclass rhizopoda and the order amoebida the cytoplasm of amoeba is bounded by a membrane and can be differentiated into an outer ectoplasm and inner endoplasm pseudopodia are formed by the amoeba by thrusting out ectoplasm followed by endoplasm these are employed for locomotion and engulfment of food by phagocytosis reproduction occurs by fission and budding cyst is formed in unfavorable conditions and is usually the infective form for vertebrate host example in amoeba histolytica amoebae are classified as either free living or intestinal amoebae a few of the free living amoebae occasionally act as human pathogens producing meningoencephalitis and other infections example nagularia and acanthamoeba the parasitic amoebae inhabit the alimentary canal entamoeba histolytica belongs to the intestinal amoebae entamoeba histolytica it is the parasite causing dysentery and liver abscess in man history entamoeba histolytica was discovered by loch in the year 1875 who demonstrated the parasite in the dysentric feces of a patient in st petersburg in russia in the year 1890 william osler reported the case of a young man with dysentery who later died of liver abscess councilman and loffler in the year 1891 established the pathogenesis of intestinal and hepatic amoebiasis and introduced the terms amoebic dysentery and amoebic liver abscess next the epidemiology entamoeba histolytica is worldwide in prevalence being much more common in the tropics than elsewhere it has been found wherever sanitation is poor in all climatic zones from alaska at 61 degrees north to the straits of magellan at 52 degrees south it has been reported that about 10% of the world's population and 50% of the inhabitants of developing countries may be infected with the parasite the infection is not uncommon even in affluent countries with about 1% of americans being reported to be infected while the majority of infected humans that is 80 to 99% are asymptomatic invasive amoebiasis causes disabling illness in an estimated 50 million people and causes 50000 deaths annually mostly in the tropical belt of asia africa and latin america it is a third leading parasite cause of mortality after malaria and schistosomiasis if you see in india epidemiologically india can be divided into three regions depending on the prevalence of intestinal amoebiasis first the high prevalence states which account to more than 30% those are chandigarh tamil nadu and Mahar- Maharashtra second the moderate prevalence states which account for 10 to 30% of infection those are Punjab Rajasthan Uttar Pradesh Delhi Bihar Assam West Bengal Andhra Pradesh Karnataka and Kerala and the third the low prevalence states which account for less than 10% of all infections those regions are Haryana Gujarat Himachal Pradesh Madhya Pradesh Odisha Sikkim and Puducherry next is the habitat The protozoal parasite may exist in two stages trophozoic and cyst as seen in intestinal flagellates and amoebae in such cases it multiplies only in the trophic stage the trophozoites live in the mucus and submucous layers of the large intestine of man next is the morphology morphologically entamoeba histolytica occurs in three forms the first trophozoic second is the precyst and third is the cyst trophozoic trophozoic is the vegetative or growing stage of the parasite It is the only form present in tissues. It is irregular in shape and varies in size from 12 to 60 micrometers on an average being 20 micrometers. It is large and actively motile in freshly passed dysentric stool while smaller in convalescents and carriers. The parasite as it occurs free in the lumen as a commensal is generally smaller in size about 15 to 20 micrometers and has been called the minuta form. This is a trophozoite. it is made up of the following structures first cytoplasm 
The outer cytoplasm is clear, transparent and refractile. Inner endoplasm is finely granular, having a ground glass appearance. The endoplasm contains nucleus, food vacuoles, erythrocytes that is RBCs, occasionally leukocytes and tissue debris. Pseudopodia are finger-like projections formed by sudden jerky movements of ectoplasm in one direction followed by the streaming in of the whole endoplasm. Typical amoeboid motility is a crawling or gliding movement and not a free swimming one. The direction of movement may be changed suddenly with another pseudopodium being formed at a different site when the whole cytoplasm flows in the direction of the new pseudopodium. Pseudopodia formation and motility are inhibited at low temperatures than the other structures like food vacuole, endosome and the nucleus. About the nucleus of the trophozoite, the nucleus is spherical, 4 to 6 micrometers in size and contains a central karyosome surrounded by clear halo and anchored to the nuclear membrane by fine radiating fibrils called the linen network giving a card field appearance which you can see in the diagram. The nucleus is not clearly seen in the living trophozoites but can be clearly demonstrated in preparations stained with iron hematoxylin. The nuclear membrane is lined by a rim of chromatin distributed evenly as small granules. The trophozoites from acute dysentric stools often contain phagocytosed erythrocytes. This feature is diagnostic as phagocytosed red cells are not found in any other commensal except intestinal amoebae. The trophozoites divide by binary fission in every 8 hours. Trophozoites survive up to 5 hours at 37 degrees Celsius and are killed by drying heat and chemical sterilization. Therefore, the infection is not transmitted by trophozoites. Even if live trophozoites from freshly passed stools are ingested, they are rapidly destroyed in the stomach and cannot initiate infection. In fresh preparations, it is not visible due to rapid movement, but with decrease of motility, faint outline of the nucleus is visible. This is the structure of the trophozoite when weaved under a microscope. So these are the important characteristics of the trophozoite which we need to remember. Next is the pre-cyst stage. Trophozoites undergo encystment in the intestinal lumen. Encystment does not occur in the tissues nor in feces outside the body. Before encystment, the trophozoite extrudes its food vacuoles and becomes round or oval, about 10 to 20 micrometers in size. This is the pre cystic stage of the parasite. It contains a large glycogen vacuole and two chromatid bars. It then secretes a highly retractile cyst wall around it and becomes cyst and oval in shape. This is the pre cystic stage when seen under a microscope. These are the points we need to remember regarding the pre cyst stage. Next is the cyst stage. The cyst is spherical in shape, about 10 to 20 micrometers in size. The early cyst contains a single nucleus and two other structures. First, a mass of glycogen and second, one to four chromatoid bodies or chromedial bars which are cigar-shaped refractile rods with rounded ends. The chromatoid bodies are so-called because they stain with hematoxylin like chromatin. As the cyst matures, the glycogen mass and chromedial bars disappear and the nucleus undergoes two successive mitotic divisions to form two and then four nuclei. The mature cyst is thus quadrinucleate. The cyst wall is a highly refractile membrane which makes it highly resistant to gastric juice and helps it to survive under unfavorable environmental conditions. These are the points we need to remember regarding the cyst stage. This is the cyst when weaved under a microscope. This is the evolution of entamoeba histolytica from a trophozoite stage to a pre-cystic stage to a uninucleate cyst, then a binucleate cyst and finally to a cyst stage with four nuclei. Next is the life cycle. Man is the only host for entamoeba histolytica. The life cycle can be simplified into four stages. First, the cysts in contaminated food water. Second, existation in the small intestine. Third, multiplication by binary fission. And fourth, encystation in the large intestine. First, the cysts in contaminated water. Man acquires infection by swallowing food and water contaminated with the cysts. As the cyst wall is resistant to the action of gastric juice, the cysts pass through the stomach undamaged and enter the small intestine. This is followed by the second stage that is existation in the small intestine. When the cyst reaches cecum or lower part of the ileum, due to the alkaline medium, the cyst wall is damaged by trypsin leading to breaking of the cyst wall. This process is called as excystation. This is followed by the third stage that is multiplication by binary fission. The cytoplasm gets detached from the cyst wall and amoeboid movements appear causing a tear in the cyst wall through which quadrinucleate amoeba is liberated. This stage is called the metacyst. The trophozoites are called as metacystic trophozoites. The nuclei in the 
the metacyst immediately undergo division to form eight nuclei, each of which gets surrounded by its cytoplasm to become eight small amoebulae or metacystic trophozoites. Now, based on two factors, the further process takes place. First is when the immune system of the host is susceptible or weak, then these metacystic trophozoites cause invasive infection, which results into three different conditions. First is the amoebic ulcer, then the amoebic dysentery, and third is the amoebic liver abscess. And if the immune system of the host is insusceptible or strong, it leads to non-invasive infection. That is, the metacystic trophozoites start colonizing in the cecum and colon in the large intestine and it leads to the next stage that is encystation. If excystation takes place in the small intestine, the metacystic trophozoites do not colonize there but are carried to the cecum. The optimal habitat for the metacystic trophozoites is the submucosal tissue of cecum and colon where they lodge in the glandular crypts and grow by binary fish. Some develop into pre-cystic forms and cysts, which are then passed in feces to repeat the cycle. The entire life cycle is thus completed in one host, man. In most of the cases, Entamoeba histolytica remains as a commensal in the large intestine without causing any ill effects. Such persons become carriers or asymptomatic cyst passers and are responsible for maintenance and spread of infection in the community. The spread of infection is via the fecal route. So this is about the life cycle of the parasite in tummy by life. If you wish to see more of such videos, do comment below. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Also, press the bell icon for early notification of my new videos.